Steam, pretty cool application. Got a lot of games. You know what games cost? Money. You know what some people don't got a lot of? Money. But luckily for them, there's this little thing called free to play. And Steam has some brilliant, absolutely masterfully crafted free to play games. But you know what Steam also has? A lot, a lot of garbage. But people don't usually play those games. But cost their garbage. But someone has to. Someone has to give these underdogs a chance. And that is gonna be my flavor of self torment today. First up is Battle Life Online, a game with amazing reception, with such beautiful positive reviews such as Bitcoin miner. So I knew I found some gold. So I booted up Battle Life Online where I was greeted by a lovely login screen. And there's my email and password. Do whatever you want with that. I don't particularly care about what happens to my Battle Life Online account. Once I logged in, I was greeted by this beautiful bald lady who seemed to be drenched in olive oil. It turns out that was me and my god, I could shoulder press a mountain. Oh my gosh, I got them boulder shoulders. After a few more minutes of shock and some character customization, I finally finished up my character. Appropriately named her Miss Boulder Shoulder. Due to the game being Battle Life Online, I would of course then try to join a server. I would then unfortunately find out there is no servers. Ah, there is no servers. Yes, pass me. That is right. There is no service. I would then pilgrimage on to the Battle Life website, where I'd find a link to the Battle Life Discord. After a bit of perusing around, I found that it was pretty much dead. Well, actually, it was never really alive in the first place. Hell, the counting bot didn't even work. So I shared some very important images and left. My final verdict in Battle Life is that it has amazing potential to be fantastic. It also has amazing potential to be awful. It just needs more players so we can actually find out. Second game is Army of One, or maybe just Army of. They put red text in the red background, so we're already starting off great. However, this one actually has good reviews, so who knows, we might actually get to play the game this time. And oh boy, does it look promising. Look at that community content. This game looks nearly as good as, uh, PUBG Mobile on an iPhone 6. Also, it just seems to be SWAT guys and Dust too. So like, where does like the magic alien women come into play? You know what, there's only one way to find out. It's a beautiful game. No one has ever criticized it ever. I guess no one has ever played it ever. So I booted up the game and I gave myself the most obnoxious name I could think of. I then entered matchmaking for a 1v1 game, and despite me and my friend being literally the only two people in the entire known universe playing this game, we somehow didn't get into the same game. Actually, we didn't get into a game at all. It just spat us back out into the main menu. So instead, I hosted my own server, chose the iconic map Arena 1. We would soon find out Arena 2 is just the same map. And even before that, we'd find out the map is literally just Dust 2 from CSGO. But nevertheless, we hop in the game. I would choose my loadout, a simple AR and a handgun. Before I knew it, we were in and blasted. Well, more so getting blasted. Because you see, not only can the bots auto-lock onto you, they can auto-lock onto you through walls. And on top of that, they can shoot through said walls. So even if there's an entire building between you and a bot, they can auto-lock onto your head and just shoot through the entire building. However, when I made a botless server, the game was actually kind of fun. Yeah, the gunplay didn't feel particularly bad. It wasn't the best, definitely wasn't like anywhere near like great, but it wasn't bad. Only thing was the gun that I'm using, the SVD, was kinda overpowered, like it just one-shotted no matter what. So when the broken ass bots are in the game, it actually isn't that bad. Hell, I'd even recommend trying out if you have a friend to play with, just 1v1ing and does too. Time for the third game, Bikini Island Challenge. And ooh, 75 reviews, very negative. I have a feeling this game is made for a very particular kind of person. But hey, only way to find out is to dive right in. So after consulting reviews, it appears that this one may genuinely just be a crypto miner. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm gonna skip this one. The next game I'd go on to try would be Galaxy in Turmoil. And oh boy, the reviews were not happy with this one. However, I'd go on to check and it seems the game isn't a crypto miner and it's actually playable. So even though it basically has 300 negative reviews, it's off to a great start. I booted up and I was greeted by a actually really nice looking main menu and UI. So I checked the server browser and of course there's no servers there. So I host my own. There's options to change the map, but they uh, do literally nothing. I'm then greeted by a character selection screen with a couple of aliens. And I have to say, there seems to be more effort put in this character selection screen than all of the other games combined. I load into the actual game and it actually looks really good. It looks like a proper game with proper modeling. I have to give it to them. It looks like an actual game instead of just some acid flip. And the guns worked. They like, actually felt good to shoot. Only a few seconds in and it's already completely outperformed all the other games. There's also this weird alien device thingy that seemed to just spray <laughs> everywhere. I head into the battlefield and there are bots that actually 
worked. They knew how to attack you, but they, you know, wouldn't lock onto your head and start shooting you through walls. It was a miracle. They were responsive, but they also weren't impossible to kill. And when they died, they'd ragdoll. And the physics were actually kind of realistic. They wouldn't collapse in on themselves or turn to jelly. They would just collapse. I was in shock. After getting hit with games that were either crypto miners, didn't work, or completely unpolished and just kind of bad overall, it was just a breath of fresh air just to play this game. Sure, yeah, it was nothing amazing, but it was good. It was okay. I was having fun just blasting these aliens, and eventually, the aliens blasted me, and that gave me a chance to check out the other classes and characters. Each character had their own unique model and their own unique skill sets along with weapons, but the assassin was the one that caught my eye the most, so I decided I'd check that one out. The assassin had a thing called the hover pack, which which allowed you to float through air, along with a sniper rifle and a multi-shot pistol. I'll admit, I wasn't a big fan of sniping, it felt a bit janky to me. However, using the multi-shot pistol along with the hover pack was actually really fun. I enjoyed floating around and just absolutely washing down people with the triple shot. Next character I tried to be a demolitionist and oh. Oh, this is my kind of character. Easily my favorite. Easily my favorite. Demolitionist had a grenade launcher that would just shred aliens to pieces. And it felt good. It felt good getting kills with this thing. S tier character. Absolutely brilliant. And with that, I'd have to say Galaxy and Turmoil is easily the best game in this list. Well, at least so far. It looks good. It feels good. And it's just fun to play. Along with that, I didn't even encounter a single bug. I definitely recommend checking this one out. However, the devs have abandoned the game, but you can still host your own servers and play, so shit, go check it out. It seemed as if sci-fi games were the way to go. So next up was Primordium Day Zero, another sci-fi survival game with mostly negative reviews. One of the reviews so negative that they somehow refunded the game. I guess he's just so mad he needed his zero dollars back. I also just realized the latest update is from December 4th, 2020, and it reads, no more. The game's broken and I can't fix it. So yeah, uh, I'm certainly getting myself into something. The game is so broken, the dev just gave up. He didn't abandon the game, he made an official announcement saying, this is just too broken. There, There is nothing I can do. So as always, I blew up the game. And I'm greeted by a cool feature that none of the other games have done yet. They have a system to adjust the game graphics to match my PC specs. Which I just thought was pretty cool, because none of the other games have done that. Once it's well adjusted, I'm then greeted by a okay looking menu. I choose a sandbox world. Within the sandbox world, I meet the strange green guy who wants to make me shit my pants. I buy a gun off him and it turns out the gun's only ability is to make me stiff my own armpits. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention, I have a lightsaber for some reason. Just thought that was cool. So yeah, it has enough of sandbox. I then check out the campaign and there's a bunch of different species I can choose, but they all kind of just look the same. I get into the game and it's just telling me about how I have to stop like Karl Marx to make some sort of serum or something. It, I don't know. All I know is there's a objective point and I gotta walk to a control panel. And after a whole lot of walking, I get there. I say walking because I tried to sprint, but the sprint button just doesn't work. It shows a little image of a guy running, but it just doesn't do anything. Also, for some strange reason, this dude just appeared in the floor. Who? Who the? What? What are you? I continue walking through some barren hallways where NPCs won't spawn and eventually I go into this room where this guy is just in the middle of this massive plane for some reason. After I talk to him, all the NPCs spawn in and I take the side quests to get this kid back to her mother or something. I then find out I have like a crazy NBA vertical, so at least I got that going for me. And then find this weird looking alien dude and I start finding him with the pickaxe I have for some reason. <laughs> he hits me with some cool moves, I strike back, but eventually I see these cool guys having a sword fight in the distance and I'm like, oh, I gotta check out what that is. I go over there and it's kind of lame, to be honest. I start fighting them, but I do like no damage to them. But for some reason, no one can do any damage to me, so it's kind of just going nowhere, and yeah, I, I had enough of this game. I know throughout this video, I may have come off as very sarcastic and quite harsh to a lot of these games, but I genuinely do believe a lot of these had a lot of hard work and passion put in them. Good ideas and hopes to make a great, successful game, just taken out the wrong way or done by people who just simply didn't have enough experience. Except for maybe Bikini Island Challenge. But I genuinely do hope that a lot of these devs learn something from making these games and can go on to make greater, better things in the future. And by all means, if you thought any of the games in this video looked good or maybe just good bad, then go check them out. They're all on Steam and they're all pretty free. Oh yeah, also I recently made a Discord where I post cool wizard pictures, so if you want to go check that out, it's in the description. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, see ya. <laughs>
You fold and twist the towel of my pee into a bottle. You say that you have it with your tea. I will, and I can be yours, and I just knock me on my chest. I will, and I can be yours, and I just knock me on my chest. 